brothers and sisters, peace and blessings be upon all of you. My name is Ophelia Haragli and I'll be co-chairing this rally today with my comrade Damien Ridgewell. I'm a human rights activist and Damien is a member of the Palestine Action Group Sydney. Before we begin, I'd just like to ask that everybody here today respects the rich diversity of people that have attended to support our Palestinian brothers and sisters. This includes everyone standing beside you, the speakers on this stage, the organisers of this rally, and those who have endorsed the rally. Persecution has no religion, gender or ethnicity, and the crimes being committed in Palestine are crimes against humanity. Today is about Palestine. Today is about Palestine and it does not matter where you come from or what your beliefs are. What matters today is that we peacefully stand strong and united in solidarity with the Palestinian people. In 2008, Vilnais, the Israeli Deputy Defence Minister, threatened to unleash a bigger Shoah in Gaza. Shoah is the Hebrew term for Holocaust. Let's see how close they've gotten. Doesn't the siege on Gaza liken to an open air concentration camp in one of the most densely populated places on earth come under the banner of mass destruction of life? Isn't the Zionist Israeli ethnic cleansing regime which mass murders Palestinians state sponsored? Isn't the use of white phosphorus raining fire down like rasping tendrils onto the Palestinians in Gaza considered a war crime? Isn't the illegal use of depleted uranium, forbidden arms and white phosphorus along with airstrikes, tanks and on the ground assassinations of civilian Palestinians considered an unprecedented phenomenon of human destruction? Yes, yes and yes. So what do you do when you are threatened with a Holocaust? In 1943, the Jews of the Warsaw Ghetto violently and bravely resisted the Nazis at Treblinka. The Jewish inmates bravely staged a revolt after seven brutal years of torture, persecution and death. The Palestinian people are fighting not seven years but 66 years of massacring of their people with that same will not to die, but to protect themselves. They are resisting, and as the occupied oppressed, they have a legal right to do so. <laughs> to quote United Nations General Assembly Resolution 3324 of 29th November 1978, reaffirms the legitimacy of the struggle of peoples for independence, territorial integrity, national unity and liberation from colonial and foreign domination and foreign occupation by all available means, particularly armed struggle. This justification for legitimate armed resistance has been specifically applied to the Palestinian struggle repeatedly reaffirms the legitimacy of the people's struggle for liberation from colonial and foreign domination and alien subjugation by all available means, including armed struggle, strongly condemns all governments which do not recognise the right to self-determination and independence of peoples under colonial and foreign domination and alien subjugation, notably the peoples of Africa and the Palestinian people. So today we tell our government that we will not fall victim to your lies. We stand firmly with the truth, the same conviction of truth and right that has kept the Palestinian people heroically steadfast in their resistance, their spirits, their will to fight and not to die, to rise up time and time again against their occupiers. And it is this conviction of truth and right that we amongst millions across the world respect, 
support and stand in solidarity with. We've come out to the streets of Sydney now four times in a row to denounce Israel's latest horrific massacre of the Palestinians. And as we speak, the massacre in Gaza truly has reached um, horrific proportions. This morning, the death toll went over 1,700 Palestinians in Gaza in just four weeks. This is now the longest running Israeli uh, act of aggression against the Gaza Strip in recent memory, within the last decade. More people have been murdered in Gaza now than were murdered in the terrible bombing of Gaza in Operation Cast Lead in 2008-2009. The voices from Palestinians in Gaza say that the ferocity and the violence of the Israeli state, their bombing of Gaza, is like nothing they have ever seen before. It's fantastic that we're out here again for the fourth week in a row to say we will not be silenced while Israel carries out a genocide against the Palestinians in Gaza. We're also here to denounce the hypocrisy of the media in Australia, which constantly demands, which constantly demands of the Palestinians that they, um, they affirm Israel's right to security while Israel is massacring people in the streets of Gaza. What other occupied people would be, have the demand placed on them that they have to um, guarantee the security of their occupiers? It is unknown in history. It is outrageous that this claim is made. And that's why we stand here not only denouncing the crimes of the Israeli state, but we stand in solidarity with the Palestinian resistance, the struggle for their rights, for their freedom and for their land, and we will keep coming out until Palestine is free. I think a special mention is deserved for the dishonourable Member of Parliament, Christopher Pine, who this week, yeah, shame on Christopher Pine, who, went, who this week travelled to Jerusalem to um, pledge his support for Israel's genocide in Gaza. It is typical of this Liberal government that as they are savaging our rights to healthcare, education, our rights as workers in Australia, that they also are supporting the savaging and the brutalisation of Palestinians in Gaza. And we take, say no to both of those things. Shame on Christopher Pine and shame on the Australian government. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Long live Palestine. Long live Palestine. Free, free Gaza. Free, free Gaza. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Two things. First of all, I, I don't know what happened with our friend that was going to acknowledge the land, but it's not here. And, uh, I just want to acknowledge the land, recognize this land that we are standing as Aboriginal land. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Never see it. And keeping in the fight to get it back, I call everyone to support the Aboriginal struggle. The second point, Uh, the second point is we are talking about what happened in Gaza, but also we have to talk sometimes what happened in our own country. Today, the committee organizer of this rally he had decided to have a vehicle in the march. We told the police that we will go in to have a vehicle on the map. Suddenly, the police has decided, and that was the word, the police has decided that we cannot have the vehicle. Which right has the police to decide what we're going to do in our march? 
We try help them to tell us what to do. We are calling you to express my, our deep protest to this lack of democracy. This is our right and we are going to defend it. For that, some of the people agree in the point. We are, I'm not agree personally and I keep not agreeing, but I want to tell you that whatever to post in our decisions, with decisions that we take and we make public about the marches, we are going to demand the respect and you have to support us. <laughs> democracy for us, democracy for everyone. the voice of a person who is in Gaza who is suffering under the bombing and the occupation right now. Um, Moaz Khaled is a man living in Gaza. His house has been destroyed by Israel's bombing uh, over the last four weeks. Uh, we have had people who have been in contact with them and have got him to record a statement to play to us here so we can hear from the people within Gaza right now. So um, we'll get that statement to, be, to play right now from Moaz Khaled. Assalamu alaikum brother and sister. Firstly, our praise to Allah for giving me this opportunity to share my story in the situation in Gaza. I would love to thank Sister Shaima Abdullah and the Palestinian Action Group Sydney for allowing me to be heard. I would also love to thank each and every one of you for your love and support for the victim of Palestine. My name is Muad Khalid. I am a 22 years old with a vision. A dream of becoming a teacher. I lived with my family in Rafah, south of the Gaza Strip, up until we had to leave the first day of Israel attack on Gaza, which was the start of the genocide. My family were fortunate enough to escape in time before our house was attacked. It wasn't until they had the truth that I worked up the courage to see what was left of my family home. The home my father struggled to build. He worked all his life only to have Israel take it all away. But alhamdulillah, we are all okay. Some are less fortunate with no time to leave, nowhere to go, only to remain in their houses and pray. My grandmother's house was also targeted. Alhamdulillah, my auntie and my grandmother survived but were treated in hospital for their injuries. My friend Mahmoud Ghannam, aged 28, 28 died after his house was attacked. My friend Azad Duhar, aged 24, also fell victim to Israel attack. I could barely recognize him as his body laid burned and filled with dust. May they were their soul rest in peace. Now, nowhere is safer, nowhere is safe for us anymore. We have nowhere to go. Every night I lie in bed hoping to get some rest but not knowing if I will get to say another day. The house I seek shelter no longer stay, feel safe. I see explosions in the distance which seem to get closer and louder. The wood shake and my heart beat, first, beat faster. I wonder if I am next. This is a genius side. We are all trapped, we are all blessed and I question if we will ever have a freedom when will this stop children left with no family a generation of children scared for life civilians are tra traumatized by a blood filled street thousands of families displaced i will keep but i will keep separating the truth i will continue to expose the real terrorists like my seven years old sister Fatima said, the rocket may be above us, but Allah is above them all. Please try, please pray for us. We need you to be our voice as there may 
May come a time that we can no longer be heard. May Allah reward you all. Assalamu alaikum. Takbir. 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 Takbir simply means to say God is great. Our next speaker is Bisan Hussain. She's a, pa she's a Palestinian born in Australia. November 2nd, 1917. Within the justification from only 13 lines, Balfour declared, My land, my home, my olive trees, my people, my beauty, my history, my Palestine, all signed away to those who claim their promised land to be my home. My home went from being free to under occupation, from peaceful to a war-torn country, from a place upon what I called Palestine to a place the world now calls Israel, a place that gave birth to children in hope of becoming heroes, with now a death toll of more than a thousand of those heroes killed. If the land of 9-11 deserves a minute of silence, Palestine should be the reason for humanity to never speak again. I ask you all to envision this, an old man clutching his chest. He digs through his shirt only to take out a rusty old key calling us from what was once a playground, nothing left of it but destruction and dust, and says, my children of Palestine, the rightful owners of this land in which once was ours, I swear to you, these checkpoints were never here, and I promise you, this apartheid wall will crumble. We will return to Palestine. My children never lose hope, because of every soul we lost, for all the endless occupation, for the missing link in our history, for the missing bond between families, this world that claims to be peaceful will learn the truth. And when this world learns their wrongs, when the ongoing historical cycle stops, when we start to reflect and learn from the mistakes the people before us made, we will be free. When we start to learn what happened to Aboriginals is wrong, when we learn from the hatred we have towards, uh, towards those of our history who committed genocide, we will be free. My children of Palestine, an apple fell off a tree and Newton discovered gravity. Yet humans fall and crumble to the earth and no one discovers humanity. I promise to you a land that I once had because the children of Palestine deserve it back. We will have our homeland back. This man is my grandfather. Allow me to speak my Arab tongue before they occupy my language too. Allow me to speak about what isn't being heard before the world is occupied by the deceiving things they say. Allow me to fight for the right of my beloved home. Allow me to fight for Palestine. I'm sure that the whole world knows what's happening in Palestine for the past month. Palestine has been hit with a heavy case of genocide. Genocide is taking place while the world is watching, oblivious to what is happening. On average, nearly 100 innocent civilians are targeted daily by Israel's heavily armed defense forces and war machinery. Where is the humanity in this? One massacre followed by another massacre and another massacre and another massacre. The Shujai massacre, Khuzai massacre, Shujai again, followed by the Rafah massacre and the massacre of the four innocent, pe innocent kids playing on a beach to the massacre of the innocent civilians who were out celebrating Eid, a day of the apparent ceasefire within Gaza. From the sea defense force to the air forces and the walls that, celebrate the, the, that separate the Palestinians' land, where are they supposed to go? And please give me an explanation as to how they're supposed to get there. Let me explain something to you. Israel has not only attacked schools funded by the United Nations, but they have desecrated and are violating not only human rights, but nearly every international law there is. Where is their punishment? Where is their prison? Why are they allowed to break international laws and get away with it? Mr. Abbott, how do you sit and do maths homework with your child when the simplest of all equations, all human rights are equal, is des desecrated by Israel, who is being supported by hypocritical Western governments all around the world? <laughs> Genocide is being supported in your name. I don't know what has come to the world. I don't know what has become of the world I live in when my Prime Minister stands up and says at one point that all Australians are Israelis. In my eyes, I heard you say, I, Tony Abbott, support genocide. <laughs> Mr. Abbott, how do you think the Palestinians feel when your government denies their right to live? When your government leaves Palestinians to side with state terrorism? Does the word Palestinian automatically assimilate to you as lower class? Does the word Palestinian even get mentioned or broadcasted on your country's news channels? Do the deaths you hear about even affect your life to a minor degree? Mr. Abbott, I have a sister. She's only seven. She came up to me the other day and said, 
I want to be a fairy. I thought, okay, yeah, most seven-year-olds want most seven-year-olds have an ambition of becoming a mystical creature at some stage. She interrupted me to say, I want to be a fairy, not for the wings or for the beauty. I want I don't want that. I want to be a fairy because I want to fight to Gaza and help my brothers and sisters in humanity that are suffering. I want to help them as a fairy because this world isn't helping them at all. My sister is seven and she feels that no amount of human in this earth could help them help us in Gaza. Why is that? Why do you run a country to protect your people? Why do you care about the health of Australians? Why did you run to become Prime Minister? When you were seven, was your ambition Prime Minister or Hero? Mr Abbott, these questions forever ponder in my mind. Why care about the health of, and reputation of your country if you don't care about what's happening in the universe? Not, your own, not only your country, your universe. Mr Abbott, I have ambitions that I want to live up to too. And one of my ambitions is to become something of my life. Become something only to free those who live in Palestine. Across the world, we've seen our Jewish brothers and sisters burning their Israeli passports in support of Palestine. <laughs> Thousands of Jews, Orthodox and non-Orthodox, have spilled out into the street time and time again to show their solidarity with the people of Palestine, holding placards and screaming, not in my name and never again. Our struggle is not against Jews or Judaism. This is the struggle against the colonization of land, the establishment of an illegal Jewish state, and its siege on the Palestinian people and their territories. Our next speaker is Peter Slezak from the University of New South Wales and co-founder of Independent Jewish Voices. He is also on the Australian Palestine Advocacy Network. Thanks very much, everybody. This is a very important meeting, and uh, I'd like to uh, address some of the important points from the perspective of somebody who's a Jew and following the remarks that were made. The Commissioner General of the United Nations said recently, the world has failed the people of Gaza and the people of Palestine. And the front page of the Guardian newspaper last week carried the headline, today the world stands disgraced. But some people are more disgraced than others. I'm here today because the State of Israel does not represent all Jews. I'm among one of the very many Jews around the world. I'm one of the very many Jews around the world who are horrified and deeply shamed by what the Jewish state is doing in our name. I'm proud to stand in solidarity with you, with the people of Gaza and the Palestinian people as a whole. We're supposed to have learned a lesson from our own history to stand up and speak out for the victims and not to make excuses for the perpetrators. The most important lesson from the Holocaust is that ordinary, decent people watched it happen and did nothing. And the lesson from the Holocaust, the slogan, never again, means never again to anyone. Tragically, and not for the first time, we're witnessing not a war, but a large-scale atrocity and a barbarity on the people of Gaza by Israel. The only human response is the one we saw, I think we've all seen that television report of the UN official who broke down on the camera, sobbing, and couldn't continue. That's the human response to what we're watching online and on television. But the question is, why so many people are incapable of responding with the same humanity? And worse still, they even blame the Palestinians for their own tragic deaths. This is an obscenity. Shame. This is an obscenity and a loss of ordinary human decency. I want to also address something that's very relevant to the rally here today and the way in which it's often covered in the media, which is problematic and we need to respond to it and, and understand it. 
Uh, for three weeks we've been rallying here and we join hundreds of thousands of decent people around the world in cities to express our humanity. But these rallies, like this rally, are characterised as hate-filled and anti-Semitic. But I want to affirm what many speakers have said over the last three weeks, is that it is not anti-Jewish to be critical of Israel, it's for humanity. Most of my own family were victims of anti-Semitism. They were exterminated in the Nazi Holocaust. My parents were both survivors. My 89-year-old mother, who's alive, is a survivor of the Auschwitz concentration camp. So I think I can recognize anti-Semitism when I see it, and I don't see any anti-Semitism here. Thank you. That's very important and I appreciate the way in which the meetings have been uh, conducted and the way people have spoken. If you're here today, it's unnecessary to recite the facts that we're all familiar with. But we're here because so many other people don't know the facts. I won't have to go through what happened in 1948, the Nakba and the uh, ethnic cleansing. I don't need to recite all of that stuff. What we hear today though is constantly about Israel defending itself, not that Palestine has a right, but only Israel. We hear about rockets, tunnels, terrorists, targeted pinpoint surgical attacks, human shields and crossfire. I teach philosophy and language and I care about precise language. It's bullshit. One of the symptoms, one of the indications is that in the West Bank there are no rockets or tunnels and they've been arresting hundreds of people and kids and killing two children a week. That's 1,400 since the year 2000. We have to, we have to respond. Shame. We must counter the barrage of lies that prevent so many other people from understanding what's going on and reacting to it as human beings. But we have a weapon which is ultimately more powerful than the well-funded propaganda machine of the Israel lobby and its apologists and the mouthpieces in the media and in politics. We have on our side compassion, we have a sense of justice, and we have the truth. And we can make a difference. You probably know that dozens of experts, professors of international law, have recently come out with a statement, dozens of experts, condemning the deliberate terror by Israel which they say, quote, is unequivocally illegal under international law, and they have declared Israel a terror state. It's, it's relevant to recall something which is often not mentioned or forgotten. If we want to understand the state of Israel and its behavior, we mustn't forget that in Beirut in 1982, Israel indiscriminately shelled Beirut and killed 17,000 people. 17,000 people. It, it was as a result of that, it was a result of that these legal experts have pointed out a doctrine, what's referred to as the Dahia doctrine after a, a suburb of Beirut, which was the doctrine that Israel conducts deliberate, uh, uh, disproportionate force and, and terror to inflict uh, suffering on civilian populations. That's what we're seeing today in Gaza and as we saw in 2008-9. But you don't have to be an expert in international law to see and to understand what's going on. The numbers speak for themselves. You can't destroy an entire residential district like we've seen in Shujaya and uh, Beit Hanun and elsewhere. You can't do that by accident uh, unless you are deliberately targeting innocent civilians. We've seen the pictures of entire districts reduced like Shujaya to rubble. If that was happening in Tel Aviv or in Sydney, the whole world would stop it immediately. Many people have said, many people have said the obvious, this is not a war, it's an atrocity and a barbarity. The question is, why is there silence and inaction from our leaders, from the US leaders and from our own? Where's Tony Abbott? Where's Bill Shorten? Shame on all of them. I'd like to make two more points before I wind up. 
The first is that, of course, we only hear about Israel's right to self defend itself. And not only is the question, what about the Palestinian right to defend itself, we have to understand how the Israeli government and the public respond to this, this uh, uh, question of the existential danger, as they call it, a delusion about the, the, the fear uh, from the Palestinians uh, to, to their existence. This attitude is extremely dangerous because it justifies what have been quite open calls for literally genocidal terror on the Palestinians. These are calls by members of the Israeli parliament. Not only in the streets do you see uh, Israelis calling death to the Arabs, which is terrifying racism, it's members of the Israeli parliament, the Knesset, that are explicitly making calls like this. I won't try and detail all of it. The, this is a very important point to understand about the problems we're facing and how things can spiral out of control. The Deputy Speaker of the Knesset, Moshe Feiglin, effectively called for a, a, a genocide and a wiping out of Gaza. The woman uh, member of the parliament, Ayelet Shaked, called for the rape and murder of Palestinian mothers because of the little snakes that they would give birth to. Shame on these people. And one other example, the Times of Israel recently had an editorial which was pulled down, but it explicitly called for genocide. So let me address what we can do. There are a few things that we can do. Israel has not been held to account in the past. We shouldn't have to come out here every few years for these horrors that we saw in 2008 and in 2012. Israel has not been held to account and we must act to, to force Israel's uh, uh, impunity, to end Israel's impunity. First of all, first of all, there are important symbolic uh, acts that we can take. Two English towns, Bradford and Preston, are flying a Palestinian flag on their town hall. What about it? What about it, Clovermore? What about our town hall? Maybe that's the next good step. Second of all, it's important we all know there cannot be peace without justice. It's not peace if there's no justice. We have to press our politicians and our media to bring Israeli officials before the International Criminal Court where they can be tried. And finally, there's what many of you understand the acronym BDS, Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Against Israel. There's growing worldwide support for boycotting, divesting and, and sanctioning those that are profiting from the occupation and that are causing the illegal uh, uh, settlements uh, to flourish. We must uh, boycott, divest and sanction until Palestine is free. Free Palestine! Thank you. Free, free Palestine. Okay, this week actually we've um, had something quite fantastic happen in that there was a statement that was put out from Canberra signed by 55 uh, members of parliament around the country denouncing Israel's crimes in Gaza. I just, I just want to say something. I try and observe everybody's, everybody's wants here. When somebody asks me to do a chant, I do it because it reflects the masses of the people here. I hope that you guys will respect that. We are all here for the same reason. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Yes, as I was saying, 55 members of parliament signed a document uh, calling for an end to Israel's aggression to the Palestinians in Gaza and an end to the brutal siege of the Gaza Strip, which is a fantastic statement, both calling for an end to Israel's hostilities but also justice for the Palestinians. And it's fantastic to see 55 MPs, both from Greens, the Labor Party, Independents, putting their name to a statement that denounces Israel's crime. I want, I want to invite up to the stage to speak now Maureen Faruqi, who is a New South Wales um, parliamentarian from the Greens Party, who will be speaking about her support for the Palestinians and this statement. Uh, Maureen.
Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, everyone. I'll start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land we gathered on, the Gadigal of the Aora Nation, and pay my respects to the elders past and present. This land always has been and always will be Aboriginal land. In the last four weeks, more than 1,400 Palestinians have been killed. More than 75% of them have been civilians, including 249 children. This is heart-wrenching, devastating, and completely and utterly inexcusable. And all this has happened during the month of Ramadan, a month where there is a heightened sense of peace, spirituality, and goodwill. As many of us have been marking Eid celebrations across the world this week, our heart and our thoughts have been with all those families who've lost their loved ones. As we stand here today, as we stand here today, shamefully, the Israeli army is intensifying its war against the people of Palestine. Hospitals, schools, places of worship, places of protection, and a center for the people with, with disabilities have been targets of the Israeli military. Shame, indeed, shame. On Tuesday alone, 120 people, 120 Palestinians were murdered through airstrikes and Gaza's only power plant was destroyed. Shame, shame. This horrific violence is intense in Gaza, we all know that but it's also ongoing in the West Bank and in East Jerusalem. And just during this time in the last four weeks, there were 12 protesters shot dead since the last phase of violence in Gaza. Also shamefully, the international community has stood by and remained silent while Israel has intensified its atrocities. And while the Palestinian, the, the plight of the Palestinian people has deepened. As Damien said, I am one of the 55 politicians who have very proudly <laughs> I'm one of the 55 politicians which includes the Greens, Labour, Independents and the previous Liberal Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser. We've all signed on a letter calling on all Australian politicians to condemn Israel's bombardment of Gaza. This is a strong statement and in part it reads, we call on all Australian politicians to support an immediate cessation of hostilities and a ceasefire deal which includes an end to the Israel's occupation of the Palestinian territories and an end to the blockade of Gaza. I do encourage you to ask your local member whether they have signed this letter. And if not, why not? This broad scale bombing and attack from Israel must stop. Peace requires the presence of justice and the Greens will always stand up for peace and justice. As Nelson Mandela once said, we all know too well that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of Palestinians. Australians must stand together and strongly as strongly as we can, call for an immediate ceasefire and an end to Israel's occupation of the Palestinian territories, <laughs> including the removal of illegal settlements <laughs> and a just solution for the refugees, <laughs> including the right of return and an end to the blockade of Gaza. 
Australians must end this silence on Gaza and on Palestine. Enough is enough. Free, free Palestine. Please thank Marines. Uh, I'd like everyone to give a round of applause because there, there, is, there was a demonstration also happening today um, to mark Hiroshima Day, which is the anniversary of the America's um, appalling uh, nuclear bombardment of Japan at the end of World War II. And they have marched to join us in our demonstration today. So, so uh, yeah, Dennis, Dennis, please come up to the we join with you in solidarity uh, from the Hiroshima Day Committee. We've just come down from our uh, commemoration in Hyde Park and we are fully in support of your action here today. <laughs> 70 years ago, the US dropped two bombs on crowded Japanese cities, instantly vaporizing 200,000 people. But it gets worse, it gets worse. Israel has over 300 of those bombs and there are no restrictions on it. And that's why year in and year out, we struggle to make those bombs illegal for everyone, not just for Israel, but for everyone. You know, you know you can't use missiles, artillery bombardments, naval bombardments, aircraft strafing on crowded cities without maiming and killing citizens. Yet the Australian and Israeli and US governments say they can. They are liars. They are hypocrites. Just look at the death and destruction they have caused over these last few days. It's disgusting. Israel is grinding Palestinians into the dirt with their blockades, their walls, their vindictive laws and their outright murder. Of course there will be resistance. Of course there should be resistance. But when Israel complains, we say they deserve it. They don't deserve any sympathy for people resisting the terrible oppression that they have caused. Artillery, missiles, warships, warplanes are all part of the hardware of war. We work to reduce that. We work to reduce military spending. We work to get our country to cut its use of Israeli weapons, to cut its military cooperation with Israel. That's what we're working on and join with us. We work to reduce Australia's military spending, but the Abbott government is going to increase it to over $40 billion. While they attack pensioners, the education system and the health system. The US is a never wavering supporter of Israel. And Israel couldn't exist without US support, without US economic and political support. And the uh, US has said, the US has said that it is terribly upset by civilian casualties and yet they have just sent more ammunition to Israel. More ammunition, it makes a mockery of their claims. The US wants its economic policies to be dominant in the Middle East and that's why it supports Israel without question. And that's why we say that their US bases in Australia are doing a similar job in this region to what they're doing in the Middle East. That's why we want their 50 US bases out of Australia. <laughs> Those US bases, even as we speak, are providing information for Israeli aggression on the people of Gaza. We are all aware of the vast web of support for Israel in Australia. All aware of it. 
from the government, be it Labor or Liberal, from the media and from big business. And we know that big business is represented by the Israel, sorry, the Australian Israel Chamber of Commerce. And the second biggest sponsor of that group is Optus. I have picked up some leaflets here which are saying, I can't use the word boycott, but you know what I mean. People, people, Optus has a key person. It's new person advertising Optus. You know his name. Josh Thomas. Get on, uh, get on to uh, social media. Ask him to withdraw those, those ads. Because uh, Optus is a pro-Israeli company. And, and so we finish. We say, US bases out of Australia. Let's wage a campaign against cooperation of the Australian and Israeli militaries. Let's wage a campaign to stop a, a U, US aggression by removing their bases from Australia. Let's wage a campaign against the Israeli lobby and its country by facing up to Optus. Let's wage a campaign against MPs who didn't sign that document. We must keep fighting back, we know, and we know we can win. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Our final speaker before we march uh, is going to be coming up. Uh, our speaker is Jim Casey from the Firefighters uh, Fire, Fire Brigade Employees Union in New South Wales and we always make a point of inviting someone from the trade union movement to speak at these rallies because we know that unions play a crucial role in standing up against imperialism and Israeli aggression. And before, before I get Jim to speak, I just want to make a point that around Australia many unions have been passing motions denouncing Israel's crimes in Gaza. The Australian Education Union Victorian branch, the Victorian Trade Hall Council, the peak body for unions in Victoria, the National Tertiary Education Union Sydney University branch has passed a motion, the Construction, Forestry, Mining and Energy Union of Victoria, the Electrical Trades Union of Victoria have passed motions denouncing Israel's crime. And this is a, a good step forward because to actually build more support for this movement, we need the trade unions to take up this issue. This is not just a humanitarian issue, it's a union issue, it's an issue for all workers. So please make uh, Jim Casey welcome. I recognise the traditional owners of the land on which we are meeting today. They never ceded sovereignty. Friends, I'm here today as both a, a trade unionist and a firefighter. And I'm, I'm touched greatly by what's happening in Gaza in both kind of expressions of, of myself. Today we're all united by the horror, by the horror we've witnessed and the anger we feel at the collective punishment which is being meted out to the people of Gaza by the Israeli Defence Force. We've heard weasel words about how it's with great, great regret this occurs, that, that Israel's military is the most humane military in the world, that at the end of the day, if the Palestinians just shut up, everything would be okay. We've seen their crocodile tears, but the numbers speak for themselves. 1,700 dead, over 80% of them women and children. Infrastructure destroyed. Because I hate to break it to you, but a hospital without electricity is not a hospital, it's a morgue. The raw, grotesque examples of what's happened. The uh, Marabit, if I pronounce this correctly, Palestinian centre. If anyone can explain to me what a respite home for children with severe disabilities, why that needs to be bombed. If anyone can explain that to me, step up to this stage. We're united in horror at this. And that's not really what I came here to speak about today, actually, because I'm really, I'm preaching to the choir. Instead, what I wanted to speak to you about was the rescuers. The men and the women, the firefighters, the paramedics, who are right now in Gaza doing their level best to save people's lives. <laughs> now, 
there's a bit of a firefighter related jargon. We, we call a, a working job a, a, the fire ground. So if that structure was on fire, that's the fire ground. Today, Gaza is the worst fire ground in the world. It's a war zone. And like any war zone, people who go to save others, people who try to deal with fires, people who try to deal with medical problems, end up becoming targets. Really, firefighters and net ambulance staff in various forms have been military targets since war first started targeting civilian populations which really was when war first started. But what does this mean concretely right now in Gaza? Well, I'll tell you, it means that on Friday there was a rocket fire on an ambulance. It killed three paramedics. There were four injured people in the ambulance. They're now dead. It means Omar Mansour, a paramedic who can save the end of a 24-hour shift. The worst thing is the smell, the smell of the blood, the burned blood. It's everywhere. I can't get it out of my nose. It means fire crews rolling to structures of light with hopelessly, hopelessly antiquated equipment because Operation Cast Leg, Cast Leg destroyed 40% of the firefighting fleet. So what they've done, they've converted tip trucks, they've welded fire tanks, uh, water tanks onto the top. The centre of gravity is very high, so it makes it difficult. But in some ways, the biggest problem they've now got is they have no fuel. These men and women are working in extraordinarily difficult circumstances. And the thing which I think is really striking about that is when you really start to dig down, when I think about this as a firefighter, it really brings it home to me that these people are just like us. For so much of the coverage of this dispute likes to make the Palestinians some kind of other. You know, they're, they're strange, they're fanatics, they're subhuman, they're prepared to sacrifice their children. These are all lies and when you start to reflect about the firefighters, the ambulance workers, the teachers, the nurses, people who do jobs like ours in that society, you realise that they are exactly the same as us. And they don't deserve this. Look, I'm going to wrap up, but I want to say two things before I actually read you the uh, statement that, that my union took last week. The first is this. The first is that this is tremendously important that we're occupying this space and that we're talking about this and we need more of it. Uh, it really, the, the speaker earlier, who I, th I thought he nailed it. The, the only way we can counter the incredibly well-resourced, um, incredibly well-resourced information machine which is trying to spin this conflict is by having the conversations ourselves. So take this back to your workplace, take this back to your community. When you're dropping your kids off at school, have a chat to the other parents. People need to understand that this is a very straightforward question. There is a gross human rights crisis occurring in Gaza because the Israeli Defence Force are killing people. And secondly, the BDS campaign. We need to look at something else and more than just simply rallies and talking. And I think that campaign has got real potential. We know it's got potential because it really upsets them. I'm going to close with this. I'm going to read you this statement that my union adopted last week. The Fire Brigade, union, the Fire Brigade Employers Union supports the Palestinian General Federation of Trade Unions general strike in the West Bank in protest at the Israeli government's actions and condemns attacks upon Palestinian workers and trade unionists. The union applauds the tremendous work done by firefighters and emergency services workers assisting the victims of recent attacks whilst being fired upon themselves. We send our support and solidarity to all those affected by the conflict including the families of the victims. The FBU deplores the horrific attacks on Gaza and calls for an immediate negotiated ceasefire. Thank you, comrades. Long live the firefighters of Gaza and free Palestine.